I thought our guys did a tremendous job preparing for the scouting report. Um, it was an emotional game simply because this was senior day for the Georgia Bulldogs. I knew Mike White would have his team prepared to play. Uh, and they came out, you know, blazing. I thought ultimately uh, they shot a higher percentage in that first half than they normally uh, do. They made some tough shots, but our guys did the same. They didn't, um, they didn't hesitate to, to get back to what we naturally have done. Uh, Demoy Hodge was able to get out to a great start. I thought them doubling Kobe um, until he figured out how to get those assists out of the double, which I thought opened the game up. And Noah Carter's three at the end definitely gave us momentum in the half. Second half, I think the adjustments came down to just personalities, right? I, I wanted our personalities to come out. Uh, I wanted this guy next to me. Uh, and I've been saying it all along. He needs to be more selfish. And sometimes the word selfish is a negative connotation. But in our program, if you're too unselfish, that that turns the word into selfish. And Nick Honor needs to be able to play off the dribble how he has. And we just basically flipped the court upside down and wanted to go to more ball screens than anything. And we were able to score off the dribble. Uh, the substitution pattern is what it is. It was great to have Trey Gomillion come back out uh, in front of his home state, in front of his family, friends, and loved ones to participate and play. Uh, but ultimately, it was a team win from top to bottom. Uh, proud of the result. Questions? Dennis, what do you feel like changed, you know, second half coming out and hitting like they did from three, especially, you know, what do you feel like changed there? Well, percentages, you know, they they um, level out at some point. And I thought they had the same looks. They just didn't make them. Um, and we played our defensive rotations the normal way. Uh, I just didn't think um, our guys panicked in that first half when they were able to score. But also, we didn't go zone in that second half, which allowed them wide open standstill shots versus shots on the move. So um, we're just thankful for the outcome to be able to win in an, in an environment where a team was 12 and 2 at home uh, and be able to give them only their third loss is, is tremendous on the road. Dennis, to win a road game by, by 22 points on a day where Kobe, he didn't take a shot in the second half. What, what's that tell you about? this team and the group you had out there today? Well, what I'll tell you is this, and you guys don't hear the conversations, Kobe Brown suggested that we play other guys and not himself. How unselfish is that? Uh, so sometimes you set up an environment where you're telling players what to do, but our environment is one that's conducive and allows communication back and forth. And his suggestion was taken wisely. I thought he was able to help us, but also we made the halftime substitution pattern. And I wanted Dre Golston become more of a score in these last couple games when Trey Gomillion uh, has been out. He turned into a playmaker for others, but he's a great scorer. So we kind of flipped that mindset as well. Had Trey start in that second half uh, and have Dre come in. I just didn't want to sub him in too too early because the momentum at that point had been going on in our favor and we, we kept uh, pushing up the lead. Dennis, how do you feel like this team has grown? You know, obviously I know the, the road schedule isn't quite done yet, still one more, but how do you feel like on the road, especially to get a 22 point win and a tough pace to play? You know, how do you feel like they've grown on the road this year? Well, I look at it one way. Um, we don't look at the scoreboard and we just try to play our very best every possession. Uh, and that's what we were able to do. Ultimately, any win at, and, and toward the end of February is important. Uh, any win in our program on the road is important. You cannot just say, hey, you won by this much or that much. I think ultimately the big picture, once we reflect at the end of the season, uh, we'll be able to look at this uh, win on the road as one that uh, helped define continuously who we are uh, as people, but also our improvement uh, between the lines off the court as well. Hey, Nick, um, you guys held Georgia to 22 points in the second half there. What do you feel like was the difference for the team defensively there? I feel like the uh, difference was um, we got a lot of deflections um, and just like on ball steals, um, like disrupting their offense. Um, I know they're trying to get to the paint um, and we stopped them from doing that. And then the pressure causing the uh, miss at the rim as well. So I feel like just us being active, uh, getting back to how we usually play. Uh, helped us in the long run. Dennis, Nick mentioned the the production defensively in the paint, but you guys outscored Georgia 32 to 18 offensively in the paint. How'd you see your guys kind of grow into that game in, in the lane and, and get established? I thought we shot the ball pretty good. We were 14 for 28. Um, so to know that we also was able 
to scoring that paint. You look at the transition baskets, the points off turnovers, uh, those things also count. So you kind of look at it, you know, halfway because some of those were uncontested. Halfway through the uh, game, we noticed that their rotation uh, and their and their trapping came from uh, below. And we sent those cutters instead of, and it's hard to tell shooters to not space and become cutters. So that's when they made the mental adjustment, but we told them at halftime what to, what to do. Um, we didn't get to the foul line, which is atrocious, uh, five for nine from the free throw line. You cannot put yourself in those situations. And this team is one of the top teams in the conference and country at drawing fouls and getting to the line. And I thought we fouled too much and we were undisciplined in areas. Hey, Nick, Noah's three right before halftime. It's just one shot, but what, what did that do for you guys going into the break? Um, gave us a lot more confidence. Um, we, I mean, we started off the game with a lot of confidence anyways, but that gave us a little extra boost uh, going into the second half. Um, we just felt that if we just stayed strong and stayed together, then things will, uh, will figure themselves out in the second half. So it was a big shot by him. I thought he should have uh, shot it off the catch. That first one, right? Yeah, I thought yeah. he should have shot off the catch. Um, because he knew if he didn't shoot, he was going to come out. But, uh, no, nah, I'm, I'm just happy for him. I'm glad he knocked it down. Dennis, last week you mentioned kind of the importance of those points off turnovers. You had 32 off of 19. Kind of how important was that in today's game and kind of building that stretch? Well, Mike White does a good job, and there are certain things that head coaches can't control, and that's uh, sometimes the decision-making or even the turnovers. Um, you know, they have a negative assist to turnover ratio on the season. Uh, we knew that if we stay solid, that the ball was going to come back to us. And we gambled in some occasions, but I thought our guys position wise were in the right spots and we shifted uh, when the defense or when the offense forced us to. Um, and ultimately, that's what led to to those points off turnovers. We were able to advance the ball. We was able to get spacing, uh, which are all crucial. Dennis, uh, you know, Kobe Brown comes to you with that message at halftime saying to, to go without him. Is there any hesitancy on your part as the head coach to, to do that or is the trust level there to kind of what he says goes? Kobe Brown played 19 strong minutes, 19 minutes and probably 20 seconds in the first half. So some of that is uh, what he was able to put into the game, uh, but also some things that Georgia took away. Now, what's unselfish is the fact that his IQ was able to see, okay, what can help in this specific game? And he thought at that moment, he only played nine or 10 minutes in the second half. And he wanted those minutes to be distributed amongst other guys and guys were able to step up, which I'm proud of. We've said all along, we live in our eight core values, friendship, love, accountability, trust, discipline, unselfishness, enthusiasm, and toughness. And our guys uh, was able to show uh, glimpses of it. Uh, but that unselfish spirit is something that stood out to me. Dennis, what did you like that you saw from Muhammad early in this game? Obviously, a good start for him. Well, I think Mo gave us a strong 20 minutes. He was two for three from the field, uh, but also three for four from the free throw line. Although he had two rebounds, his rebounding, he was able to stop and give us some length in, internally or in the paint. That kind of made it tough for Bridges, who was a great, great post player. Uh, but also, Mo was able to do some things defensively that I thought with his communication. Uh, to balance us out. Yeah, Nick, you know, coach mentioned, um, you know, he's he's been wanting you to be more selfish with the ball. For you, how do you try to balance finding a shot for yourself versus trying to create for his, your teammates? I want to hear the answers to this. Uh, put the pressure on me now, man. Uh, <laughs> I mean, um, I just take what they give me out there. Uh, I try to make sure my guys get shots. Uh, and then I, when I feel like I need to score, I score. So. So I'm going to give it to you right there. Man, that's a weak answer. <laughs> that's a weak answer. I need him more selfish. His team needs him more selfish. Uh, we know once he gets a little pep in his step, because he's such a great kid, he's a future head coach at the Division One level, he sees the game a certain way, and he wants his teammates to be happy, right? In that, that forces him to not be as aggressive as he could because we have guys on the floor that can score at every position. So he does a great job of managing the personalities, but also when he sees the game a certain way, we just need him to be able to do what he demonstrated tonight, and that opens it up for a lot of people. Time for one last question. Nick, I know the the video of you guys getting on the plane and stuff, rocking the the suits, whose idea was that? Did that have any have any impact on y'all's uh, performance? 
Uh, I think that was. I actually don't know. It might have been Coach Gates' idea. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, or Chase, uh, Chase Goldstein as well. No, we're gonna say Coach Gates. <laughs> <laughs> but nah, it was good. Um, I mean, mostly people see us in uniforms and all. That. I mean, basketball uniforms and all that. So it was good to, uh, you know, finally dress up a little bit. And I mean, you can still see our personality through us dressing up, get on the plane. So um, it definitely helped us. I say a little bit since we won. So I guess, I guess it helped. I'll, I'll say this. I want these guys to be able uh, to be professional, uh, not just basketball players, but professional in life. Uh, it helps them. It gives them confidence. Um, sometimes the small things add up to big things. And those guys, you know, probably spent more time posting pictures and looking in the mirror before we left <laughs> than any other time, because it was their first uh, suit travel, travel uh, trip. Um, and ultimately, that's what we want to do. We want to expose them to different parts of the world, but also uh, put them in different situations. And, you know, they enjoyed it. On this trip, we have our excellent society, uh, some donors, boosters, but also our family, friends, and loved ones, so that our fam our players can see us as husbands, as fathers, uh, not just coaches. I think that's very important as we continue to develop the young people we're developing. And they do a great job, um, you know, our, our siblings or our kids and uh, them, they treat them like siblings and they call them big brothers and you should see the relationships that they have. So uh, it was a total business trip. And I think our guys approached it that way and uh, completed it that way. All right. Thanks, Coach. Thanks, Nick. M-I-Z.